can this plant right here help with both toothaches and gastric ulcers? Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. Have you ever had a toothache? You know, I think back and literally in my life, the single greatest pain I have ever had in my entire life was a toothache. And you're thinking like, what? You wimp, what's wrong with you? Here's the thing, I have had the junk beat out of me. I had a couple guys just, just beat the living junk out of me, beat me to the ground and continued to beat me. And I can say the toothache, it was, so I had a root canal. Root canal went fine, you know, they numb you, didn't, that wasn't, wasn't so bad, not, not really bad at all. But that night, they say that potentially the, uh, I think it's like an acid solution can get down into where the root was and can, you know, just be burning in there. So there you have this sealed off burning inside, you know, in nerves in your body. And it's just like burning this stuff. And that was the worst pain I've ever had. Like I said, like 10 times worse than just having the junk beat out of me. If I, if I could choose one of the two, I'd take the beating any day. And, um, Man, so you might be thinking, so then you use the toothache plant, right? And that helped. Um, well, I wish I could say that were the case. At that time in my life, I didn't know about the toothache plant. I didn't know about natural or healthy things at all. You know, this is probably 25 years ago. I mean, this is a long time ago. So I, I didn't really know about those things. But here's, here's the thing. So can this actually help? We're going to look at the research but it's a very, very interesting plant. Now, this plant right here is originally from, potentially from South America. It grows in tropical and subtropical areas of the world. Today, it's used in places like China and in India. And people not only eat the flowers, these little guys here, but they also will add the leaves to salads and so I, I was just thinking about that i had known about the flowers and i had, i had eaten them in the past and found well i'll actually try it at the end of the video just so you can see what it's like for someone to actually consume these but i had never known that you could eat the actual leaves i had known about the flowers for years and then i read people saying well people eat them they actually eat the leaves so i'll eat some of the leaf and i'll eat one of the flowers here they are traditionally used for stomach issues and for throat and mouth infections that these these are traditional uses that people have used them in this particular review here where it talks about the phytochemistry the pharmacology and the toxicology of spilanthes acmella which is the toothache plant, it has been shown to have antifungal and antimicrobial effects. So you think, okay, maybe that would be beneficial to someone who has a toothache. Let's back up just for a moment. Will this actually heal dental caries or what people normally say, I have a cavity, but really those are these dental caries where your, your tooth is going bad or a portion of the tooth is going bad. Now let's back up a little bit and ask, can they actually be healed? Now, I had the opportunity to live in Europe in a couple different countries. I've lived in, in Norway, I've lived in Iceland, and had some dental work done while I was in Iceland. And one of the, while over in Europe, one of the dentists that I was speaking with, he shared with me something very interesting. He shared that in America, he said the dentists are more invasive than the European dentists are. So meaning that a, a dentist in, in Europe, from what I'm told anyway, will potentially, they'll look at your teeth and they'll say, okay, we see a small carry. Uh, so you have a dental carry and they would say, what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch it. If it's, if it's very small, they would watch it because sometimes they can actually just heal by a natural healing process. The body is always seeking to heal. And really it's always healing unless we do things that are damaging to the body. And in, in the vast majority of cases with many diseases, if we will get out of the way of the healing, the body will actually heal itself. But it may be that we're putting certain things that are too caustic to our teeth, too acidic to the teeth. You may be eating too many things that are seriously acidic. You could be eating things like vinegar. Vinegar is very caustic to the teeth. Um, even, even some of the fruit, especially when it's not ripe. Like a lot of fruits, when they're not ripe, you've probably noticed they're more sour. Like an apple that's super sour. Some, some apples are just breeds are more sour or varieties are more sour than others. But the reality is, is certain things that are very sour also can be caustic to the teeth. In, in general, really fresh fruit won't be so bad. It'll be more toward the sugary 
end, but not toward the acidic end. And that acidic end is what really seems to do the most damage. But when we get out of the way, and I'm going to actually do a video and what I've been able to do when I've gotten to the point in my life where I'm beginning to get slight toothaches and I realize I can even look at my mouth and realize, man, it looks like I have a cavity or a dental carry. And I change things, change habits, and it just I get to the point where I have no more trouble in my teeth, no more pain. I seem to be perfectly fine. So I'm going I'm to do a video another time on that. But I believe that in general, it actually can be healed. But let's say you're in a situation and times get hard. This is health and homestead. And if times get hard in the future and you're not able to make it to the dentist, and uh, number one, you'd really want to reverse it rather than just use a remedy to kind of cover the pain. But at, at a, an acute time, pain, you know, uh, using an analgesic would be very beneficial during times of pain. So you'd actually want to have something like this. The great thing is you can grow it on your own property. So what is it in this that has this beneficial effect? Well, they, the scientists believe that it's really from something called spalanthol. That this spalanthol obviously coming from spalanthes, acmella, the name there in the Latin. And so this compound that's in there and that seems to have these beneficial health uh, promoting and beneficial effects like antifungal and antibacterial, antimicrobial effects that are in this particular plant. One of the things I find interesting about this plant are the different common names that have been given to the plant. It's called ting flower, uh, buzz buttons. And you understand when you eat one of these buttons, one of these flowers, you understand why it's called buzz buttons. It kind of, I, I don't know how to describe it. It would be kind of a, 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 you get the picture of eating, you know, fizz in or in soda or pop, uh, that fizz feeling mixed with going to the dentist and having your mouth numbed and also maybe pop rocks not any one of those exactly but all those together give you kind of an interesting idea and it causes this salivation to take place also at the same time so once again it's called buzz buttons shishwan buttons it's been called the electric daisy um so all these names kind of give you just the import of what somebody experiences when they they eat some of this plant but once again, you may be wondering, okay, so what about these ulcers? Is there a benefit to gastric ulcers? Now, some research is actually conducted on this to kind of just to begin to establish, could it be possible that there's some kind of benefit? So notice the study here, Romnogalacteronin from Acmella oleracea and gastroprotective and ulcer healing properties. So what did they find? What they actually did is they had actually made some lesions in the stomach lining, and then they actually went in taking a compound out of this toothache plant, and then they applied it, and then they found that it actually had an ulcer uh, protective or at least healing uh, effect on the ulcer. And uh, so this is good news. So this, this gives us an idea that it might work. But you say, Chad, Chad, you didn't read the last part of the study. And, uh, and Chad, you didn't even pronounce it correctly. Well, um, I'm just guessing. I have no idea how to pronounce that word. You probably know full well. And so you, you can correct me if you'd like to. But, but that's my best guess at it. But nevertheless, so you say, but Chad, I said it was in rats. That's right. So if you know of any rats that have ulcer you know issues this would be a perfect plant to help them we know that for pretty much a fact at this point does it work in humans well i have no idea uh, obviously it's been used probably for millennia with people with uh, mouth uh, throat or stomach issues they used it because they probably perceived that it did work. We don't know for sure. So I'm not someone who says just because, uh, you know, people used to use something. I don't believe that every natural remedy that people use is either safe or effective. Many of them are just not. And that's why we like to look at the research. And that's what we do with Health and Homestead. And um, by the way, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps us out. But I want to share, I'm going to, I'm going to actually eat some of this. And um, what I need to do is I got a bunch of uh, sand on it here so I want to wipe a little bit of the sand off so here we have one of the leaves I got just a little one and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually dry this not not this leaf but the rest of the plant what I'll do at the end of the season if I see a good good frost coming you can just you can simply uproot a plant hang the thing upside down in a in a area of your house or in a shed I'll, I'll do it in my basement and just hang it upside down in the and typically within 
one to two weeks. It is amazing how fast you can dehydrate a plant. And so then you'll have your buzz buttons. You can, uh, you know, you can pull it out when your friends come over and have them eat one of the leaves or have them eat one of the flowers. The leaves are not nearly as potent as the the actual flower is. So I'll start with the with the leaf. And even though this is just a tiny leaf, and when I when I chew on it, to me, it has. A, at first, you don't notice almost anything. You start. I, I know it's like kind of a, a flavor to me that resembles the smell of shoe polish. So if you've ever enjoyed the smell of shoe polish, you're going to love the flavor of these leaves. Um, to me, yeah, it's about, it's about like what shoe polish uh, smells like. I've never tasted shoe polish, by the way. You might have been wondering. So um, I'm starting to get the tingling sensation in my, <coughs> in my mouth now. And... Uh, now I'll go on next to the uh, one of the buzz buttons. I, I guess I'll get a nice big one here. <clears throat> uh, it's right now because it's actually kind of fresh. It's kind of a, it's wet. It, it doesn't have a great flavor. Um, it's not something that you would just like. Although they actually, there are people in the world. My mouth is starting to salivate like crazy. Wow. Um, there are actually, like I said, there are people who, I'm sorry, I'm spitting. There are actually people in the world who put this in salads and uh, the leaves anyway. I don't think they put the buttons. Wow. Sorry, it's getting actually hard to talk, but this is, uh, this is buzz buttons. This is toothache plant and I can almost, um, yeah, it's a little bit overwhelming. So um, once again, something to think about. It would be a remedy that you could have on your homestead. You put it in. Uh, some people say they've even uh, put the leaves on gums of babies. I don't know about that. Talk to your doctor first. It's kind of a crazy way to end a video, but God bless. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe. Have a fantastic day. Whew. Whew. Ah. Well, that was different.